Welcome to a very sunny but also extremely cold Cardigan Memorial Hospital. My name is Alan Francis. I'm an architect with Gaunt Francis Architects in Cardiff. And we've been appointed by Wales and the West Housing to explore ideas for what might replace the hospital now that it's closed down on this site. So I'm standing here in the, in the site and I've got the River Tavy in front of me and just to my right here is the important St Mary's Church. But this site has a fascinating history. We know from the writings of Gerald of Wales in 1188 that before the hospital here, there was a Benedictine priory. And that priory was there for several hundreds of years until around about Henry VIII's time, the dissolution of the monasteries, when Henry came along took the land into his ownership, it became part of the king's land, and the site changed hands several times over the next hundred years in several private ownerships. And really until the 18th century there was very little change and the priory became quite a ruin really, but in the 18th century Thomas Johns, who had taken ownership of the site at that time, commissioned, or his family commissioned a certain John Nash an architect who gained a lot of fame in later years. He became the architect of Buckingham Palace. Uh, he was the architect of Prince Regent in London. Regent Street became a lot of his work. And he was, came to West Wales at that point of his career. And one of his first commissions was a private house. In fact, it may have been his first private house. And that was a country house on this site, which was called Priory House. And that house still remains here today. It's the John Nash house is this part of the hospital, the three bays on the left. And that house changed hands several times over the course of the 19th century. And in the early 20th century, um, after it had, had been on the market several times, a syndicate of local people decided they would put some money together to try and acquire it after the First World War with the intention of converting it into a convalescent home for veterans of the First World War. And that's what it became. It became a nursing home and Cardigan Memorial Hospital as we see it today. The name stems from that original use as a nursing home, which is what the John Nash House became. But the development of the nursing home, with its development, the local health board took over the management and the operation of the buildings and they extended and converted the uh, original Nash House several times with major extensions, particularly over the course of the 20th century. And that conversion and extension of the hospital has not been very kind to the original Nash House. Most of the wing on the left hand side of the house was removed. They added another story. The top story that you can see there is not the original uh, form of the house. It originally had a pitched roof to the top of it and the interior of the house was much altered and in fact now it, the, it really looks on the inside like a hospital building. It's very difficult when you're inside to tell whether you're in the John Nash house or whether you're in part of the modern extension. So much of it is altered internally and there's not a lot left of the original Nash proposal for this site. So we're now inside the entrance hall to the original Nash house. And there are a few existing elements of the house around that are original, perhaps. This staircase was, we think, one of the original parts of the Nash House design. And there are small elements like this door case, because the front door for the house was actually in this position here. None of this is in great condition, but it shows that there are some small elements that we might latch onto in our new scheme. So here we are inside the Nash House and the grand room, a ground floor, where the family would have sat when it was a private house, is now clearly part of the hospital. And it's not in a good state. And a lot of the hospital buildings are like this, and uh, you can see some of the damage to the walls, some of the work that's been done. But there are remnants of the original house left. There's a window here behind me, very small remnants, but they will become part of the of the new scheme, hopefully, as we go forward. So here I am now inside the church grounds. The hospital buildings are on the other side of this wall. 
And we can see already how much when the hospital buildings were developed, particularly in the 20th century, they encroached really tightly upon the space of the church. This wall, which looks to be part of the church, we think was actually part of the priory grounds when Henry VIII uh, performed his land grab, if you like, and took that land up to the edge of the church. He pushed it as tight to the church as he could. And the hospital buildings have followed it. All around me now, those buildings are really tight and suffocating the church. Wouldn't it be fabulous if we could open up a bit of space around the church and give it more breathing space as part of our scheme. So I think it'd be, it, it's really important now to consider how does our site sit within the context of the town of Cardigan. So here we are in Cardigan's High Street and it's important to know that Cardigan in the early 19th century was the fourth largest port in the United Kingdom after Liverpool, Bristol and London. This was a thriving energetic town centre and that commercial civic importance is evident around us all the time today. The buildings are fabulous, it's a fabulous high street. This town has colour, it has character but it's still quite a tight-knit town and by that I mean this, the streets are tight together. The buildings are quite low scale, maybe only two or three storeys but it has a very very strong character. This is Pontoclavion, the entrance road into Cardigan from the east. And when the hospital was developed over the course of the 20th century, it really turned its back on the town at this point. Even to the effect of building this enormous stone wall at its boundary point. And we think, wouldn't it be a great opportunity now to put something back here, a new development that was, uh, was real value to the town at this important position. So we think the modern the 20th century hospital buildings have probably got few supporters so we see this as a as a redevelopment project um, although as we talked earlier there are elements of the site which are quite historic our clients have set us quite a challenging brief here they're looking for around 30 to 35 apartments for the elderly um, those apartments won't be for sale on the open market they'll be for local people through Caradigion's housing lists and Wales in the West also would like us to put some new office accommodation on this site. They currently have accommodation in Newcastle Emlyn. The idea is to, to move that headquarters site to this location here. So it's quite a challenging brief for the site we have, partly because quite a lot of this site on the eastern side of it is in the flood zone. So we're restricted to where our buildings can go. But it's a real opportunity here and we think we can bring something of real value to the people of Cardigan. So here is a bird's eye view of the site as it stands today. The 20th century hospital buildings are coloured blue and the Nash house is coloured yellow. Our client's ownership is shown by the red line running around the site and you'll see that includes the overgrown land to the east of the site which has a Welsh water sewage pumping station within it, coloured grey. The land to the south of the site is the open grassed area overlooking the Tavy. Already in this view you can see how close the hospital buildings are to the church. We've spent some time considering the constraints and opportunities offered by the site. This plan shows the local conservation area in pink. That covers most of the town centre and stretches up to meet the wall at the western end of our site. We are right on the boundary of this important designation. Our site is not within the conservation area, but we clearly need to ensure that any development on our site doesn't detract from the setting of the conservation area. This plan also shows the listed buildings which are close by. They are shown in green and include the important St Mary's Church, listed Grade 2 star, and the red dotted lines show how we might improve permeability through the site. However, one of the biggest constraints we have is that approximately two-thirds of the site falls within a flood zone and where we therefore cannot build any new residential development. It might be possible to put commercial space in the flood zone like the new Wales and West offices or their maintenance building, 
but only if those buildings are built above predicted flood levels. We want Priory House, the Nash House, to become an important new centrepiece in our scheme. It will take a lot of work to salvage it from its current state, but we know how important this heritage asset is to the people of Cardigan, and we're very keen to make good use of it. Your local historian, Glenn Johnson, has very kindly provided us with plenty of images of this building in its glory days. We know how it originally looked, though of course many of the alterations made to it are now around 100 years old, and so are arguably just as historic. We don't think there is any merit in the 20th century hospital buildings, and we therefore propose to demolish those completely, as well as the tall stone wall, the prison wall as some people call it, that currently shields the site from Ponte Clavion to the north. We're hoping that we can salvage the stone within that wall for reuse in our scheme. And we want to free up the church from the burden of the hospital buildings and make the church integrate with our new development. So here is the ground floor plan of our proposed scheme. As I've mentioned, the idea is to make the Nash House the centrepiece of our scheme and to then free up space around the church by creating a new courtyard for the elderly residents the apartments will house. All those residents will be local people taken from Keradigion's housing lists. The new office building for Wales and West will then take over the southern part of the plan, linking with the retained Priory House. The offices will provide space for around 40 Wales and West staff. Car parking for the offices will be provided on the overgrown land to the east of the site, where we plan to build a new car park and where there will also be a new maintenance building for Wales and West. As the apartments will be limited for elderly use, only limited parking will be made available for them. The vehicular access into the site will remain where it is currently. The open space to the south of the site will remain open for locals to walk through and we're hoping that an improved circular walk can be formed around the eastern edge of the site close to the river edge. This is the first floor plan. The proposed development is a mix of two and three storey buildings, nothing higher. The plan is very similar to the ground floor layout. The design of the apartments have been heavily influenced by the zero carbon ambitions of our client. So rather than, say, planning apartments either side of a central corridor, they are all dual aspect. That is to say, they all have living rooms one end, looking, say, south or west, and bedrooms the other, looking, say, north or east. The idea is to help create an energy balance by planning the apartments so that they can take advantage of passive solar gain during the colder months and can avoid overheating in the summer. Each apartment is accessed via an open external corridor that also houses a series of balconies, each one dedicated to a particular apartment. The residents can personalise the balcony spaces themselves and they offer places to meet and socialise with your neighbours. In this sketch there is a gentleman leaving his apartment on the right. His living room window looks out over the balcony space where someone is relaxing looking over into the central courtyard. The balustrade for the balcony might be glass to ensure we get as much daylight into the apartment as we can. You can see two other people walking along, along the corridor towards us, which as it is external will not need lighting or heating during the day. It's all part of our aim to save energy costs and reduce energy bills for the occupiers. So this is the road to the north of the site as it stands today, with its large stone wall shielding the hospital. There is no pavement on the hospital side of this road at all. This will be the new view when the development is completed. The north face of the apartments looks out over the street, and you might just be able to see the residence entrance between blocks A and B. The apartment buildings are set back off the road, and we're working with landscape architects to see whether we can plant some small trees between the pavement and the buildings to soften the street scene. We have moved the boundary so that a full pavement can be created all the way down this road and we're hoping that the new low wall at the front of our landscape strip can be constructed from reclaimed stone. This is Ponte Clavion looking west into the town centre as it exists now. The large stone boundary wall is on the left. You can see that the proposed development is a mix of two and three storey buildings. We haven't yet fixed our ideas on materials, but the idea is that the scheme will be inspired by the simplicity and colour of the town centre conservation area, 
with a pitched roof and probably a mix of painted render and brickwork. The apartments will use heat pumps and heater recovery systems. They will closely follow a zero carbon design brief and cowls on the roof will provide the necessary ventilation. This will be the layout within Priory House at ground floor. What we can't do is to restore this building to its original state. Our client brief would not include returning it to a single country house. And anyway, modern regulations would make it difficult to match its original construction. So instead, we wanted it to take on a new use. Closely working with our clients, we've come up with the idea of forming a new community facility within its grand front room at ground floor. A new cafe and perhaps a new working space, a hub for the town. Our clients would support this being run by a local social enterprise and it would use the original main entrance door for the Nash House for public access. This would therefore be located at the entrance to the site from the churchyard and on the walking route that we know plenty of people in the town use. The curved landing staircase within the ground floor of the Nash House would also be retained and visible to the public. So this might be the view of the scheme from the churchyard on the walk east from St Mary Street. People have taken the walk through the churchyard and into the hospital grounds for many years and our clients are keen for this to continue. They have no intention of blocking it up. What we do need to say at this stage is that we've been exploring whether we should remove the top floor of the Priory House, the Nash House, and rebuild the pitched roof that used to exist there, or whether we should retain the top floor. As I said earlier, that is quite a historic addition and part of the history of this building. We haven't yet concluded that, and it would be interesting to see how people felt about the options. So we are now in the centre of the new scheme within the residence courtyard. The east window of the church is just visible on the left-hand side, and you can see some residents taking advantage of the landscape courtyard whilst others are sitting on their balconies overlooking the space. The new building has arches at ground floor, a cloister perhaps, which have been inspired by the Priory narrative which runs through this site. The balcony structure will be constructed in timber so as to sit comfortably against the stone of the church. We are talking to the church authorities about reducing the height or removing altogether, perhaps, the boundary wall at this point so that the church really does become part of the new courtyard setting. So this will be a bird's eye view of the new scheme looking northeast with Priory House in the foreground. The new residence courtyard is clear and the church now has plenty of space around it. So we hope that you find our proposals of interest. Gordon Francis will be hosting an interactive virtual facility at the end of February where we will field any questions you may have about the scheme. Please keep a lookout for notices about this event and we look forward to talking with you further about our proposals. Many thanks for listening and watching. Thank you.